Ni hao, Dartonians, and welcome back to The Wandering LARPer. I'm your host, Salvatore, along with co-host... Ashley Gray. And we're here this evening with an extra special episode of The Wandering LARPer called The Wandering LARPer's Beginner Guide to LARP. This is to discuss what you're going to need to pack, what you're going to experience there, what the food's going to be like, just overall atmosphere, and preparing yourself for your first LARP. So without further ado, let's jump into the episode. Let's do it. All right. So there's three big types of LARPs in the United States, right? Definitely. There's your steampunk LARP, there's your swords and spells, and there's your post-apocalypta. Yeah. Now, we're big fans of swords and spells LARPs. That happens to be our favorite genre, but they're all fun. Yeah. So somebody you know or somebody at work, one of your friends, family member, has told you about their LARP, told you about these epic adventures they're going on once a month. You're finally sold and you're going to your first LARP. Yay! All right. <laughs> so you've probably chosen between one of those three LARPs, which is Swords and Spells is very uh, Tolkien-esque, like Lord of the Rings. It's very based on Dungeons and Dragons. Steampunk LARPs are Victorian era dress mixed with uh, gadgets, usually in brass and uh, machines that would be built around that era. And uh, the post-apocalyptic LARPs are essentially kind of like The Walking Dead, survival LARPs. Exactly. Yeah. So even though it's your first LARP, you kind of want to fit in and you kind of want to get a good costume going, but you don't want to spend a lot of money because you don't even know if you're going to enjoy the LARP. Very true. So you just have to really think simply. If it's your first LARP, you want to go all black, black sweatpants, black boots or shoes, and a black long sleeve shirt. Definitely. The reason for that is most people at the LARP, if you're into it, they're going to lend you stuff for that event or plot may lend you stuff. So that's just a good base of things that you, know, you could be wearing that can mesh with anything that's going to be lent to you. Definitely. That's what I went with. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you've seen your friend and he probably has a fancy weapon, a sword, or maybe a foam uh, uh, wrench or something <laughs> of that nature. Between all of these LARPs, there's a ton of things that get safetyed into foam weapons. So sky's the limit. But again, you don't want to waste a lot on your first LARP. So what you're going to really want to do is go there and borrow something. Definitely. Make friends, talk to people, talk to plot, talk to the people running the game. More times than none, they're going to lend you something. That's the smartest way to go. Next, most people want to know about uh, the accommodations. Yeah. What to expect. You're going to be there from generally Friday uh, evening. Check-ins are usually uh, around 8 to 10 p.m. all the way until Sunday morning. So you want to be comfortable, right? Definitely. Most LARPs in the United States are held in a state park. And they completely rent out the state park. And they place players in different cabins. Uh, if you have a large enough group, generally you can notify them ahead of time and get a private cabin. So wouldn't you agree, though, because we've been in some crazy uh, situations in like negative 14 degree weather in some very hostile parks that on the top of a mountain, on the top of a mountain <laughs> that, that that didn't even have heat. No. But, you know, these are life lessons learned. So what you're really going to want to do is, depending on what time of year it is, you're going to want to make sure does the facility have air conditioning or is it heated? And uh, what's the bathroom situation like? Yes. Um, <laughs> it can vary. <laughs> yes, it can vary greatly park to park. You know, the good parks, the good LARPs that are investing in a nice park, they're going to have heated cabins. They're going to have hot showers. They're going to have a centralized tavern. Definitely. Now, tavern is the next thing that we want to really talk about. I mean, everyone wants to know about the food. Everybody wants <laughs> to know about the food. What's going to be there? Is it going to be uh, orc pudding and uh, turkey goblets <laughs> like at the Ren Fest? No. No LARPs are doing this. It's, no. it's mainly uh, uh, either junk food or just... Uh, Deli style, kind of. 
Yeah, sandwiches. Cafeteria, mm -hmm. Cafeteria style would be the best. Yeah. But remember, at some of these LARPs, there's not a professional cooking staff. So yeah, it's volunteers. If you have any type of special dietary needs, if you're vegan, if you're vegetarian, don't count on them. Uh, bring a cooler. You can also always email them ahead of time, send them a message, see what you know is on the menu. They mm -hmm. usually will give you a heads up with no problem. And always packing your own cooler is a great idea as far as drinks go because you're going to want to stay hydrated. You're going to be walking a lot at LARPs. You're going to be uh, keeping some strange hours, not getting very much sleep over the three days. Um, you're going to be traversing through the forest. And mainly what, what the real exercise is at a LARP is if you were wearing a pedometer, you would know you walk mile after mile because you're in a state park and the game is widespread, which takes us to one of the most important things, comfortable footwear. Mm -hmm. Do not go to the LARP in high heels or anything uncomfortable. If you can't bear and tolerate to wear something for three days through all terrains, just don't wear it at the LARP. It's not worth it. Not just all terrains at night, there's dew, so you're going to get wet. Oh yeah, you you always <laughs> want to have something with a little bit of uh, water resistance to it. That's very smart at the LARP. Yeah, you can spray down something too with that water repellent spray. Which is why there's always the ongoing joke when you look at these LARP forums and they say, what should I pack? And they write socks. 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 <laughs> always. And How many socks? All your socks. All your socks. It's like ingrained in every LARPer. It's this yeah. weird tradition. We all bring like 20 pairs of socks. We may only use five or six pairs, but we pack 20. Sometimes you might use 15. You so. never know where the adventure is going to take you or how many socks you need. So that is an ongoing joke. There's Free no Yeah, there's no know. sock gnomes running into your cabin <laughs> at night. You know, it's it's you're just going to need them because you're going to sweat. Mm-hmm. So uh, keeping uh, your feet dry is critical to having a good time there. Yeah, you definitely don't want your feet to start hurting. Time does not pass uh, fast then. All right, so now let's talk about check-in, okay? Yeah. So you've decided on this LARP, you've seen it online, you uh, started talking to people in the LARP forum, getting tips and ideas. You should contact the game owner and ask, hey, it's my first event, is there a reduced rate or a free event? Most American LARPs on your first event give you a complete free event. Usually. Or at least reduced price. It's like a tryout. Exactly, a tryout. So you're going to go there and check it out, see if you like it. So always ask for that uh, rebate and discount. Now, what to expect at check-in, okay? It's not like you're checking into the, uh, the, the Hyatt or a hotel or anything like that. It's usually generally, a tiny log cabin. Yeah, <laughs> generally <laughs> you're gonna have to ask a bunch of people where this little tiny log cabin is somewhere near the beginning of town or right in the tavern and you're gonna check in there. What check-in means is, is that you're either going to create a character beforehand or create a character there. You're going to settle up on payment and you're going to get your parking pass. Yep, and your cabin number. And your cabin number. And then you're officially there, you're assigned. From there, you're going to go and take your car. You're going to drive as possible to, uh, close as possible to your cabin. And you're going to unload uh, all of your stuff, your cooler, your costuming for the weekend, all of your socks. And, and bedding. And bedding. <laughs> Great point. Let's uh, talk about bedding. Yeah, you definitely want to make sure you have something warm if it's supposed to be cold. Multi layers, lots of pillows. Sometimes there's cots, sometimes there's bunk beds, sometimes it's like on the floor. So you just have to know ahead of time what your LARP it hasn't planned for you. And it's generally those um, vinyl uh, twin mattresses. Yeah, like uh, I was trying to think of the word for them. So like you have to bring sheets and you have to bring pillows and you have to bring blankets. Definitely. They usually provide toilet paper, but go ahead and bring toilet paper, bring paper towels, uh, bring wet wipes, hand sanitizer. Soap. Yes, definitely. 
Hygiene is important. You're going to be in crowded spaces, confined areas at times. You definitely want to smell good. Oh yeah, most <laughs> definitely. That is the path to popularity right there. If you stink, people don't want to bring you along on modules. That's okay. just the way it is. It doesn't matter uh, what level paladin you are. It's just you're, you're unpopular at the LARP. Yeah, so your character now has friends, is wardrobe checked in. You got your cabin all situated. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the next episode, we're going to enter into the LARP. You're going to enter it uh, into our virtual LARP with us, and we're going to kind of roll you through. And that's going to be called the Intermediate's Guide <laughs> to LARPing, or the Wandering LARPer's Intermediate Guide to LARPing. Rather. And that's all we have for this evening. Yeah. So we bid you farewell. <laughs>